What is up, YouTube? That's here, bringing you guys another episode of In a Twinja. We are still playing Battle Spot Doubles, otherwise known as potentially maybe VGC 2018. We're going to be using Mega Trench. I've got the Trench right on that guy. We switched out Landorus for a Ghostium Z Aegislash. I feel this Pokemon can cover up for some of our team's weaknesses. I now have access to Wide Guard, which is pretty good at blocking Earthquakes, opposing Rock Slides. Heat waves, what have you. Age of Slash can block those now. It also uh, can just use the Ghost DMZ and just fire up a huge Shadow Ball. Like, uh, what is that? Black? It's not Black Hole Eclipse. What is the. I don't know what the Ghost DMZ attack is, but it can fire up a huge Ghost DMZ up into opposing Cresselias. That's also pretty good. And then the same, like, Steel attacks are still also pretty good against, you know, the fairies that, you know, my Trainatar and other Pokemon struggle with. So I feel Aegislash is a little bit better than the Landorus. I feel Landorus was somewhat of just a different Excadrill, and there's no reason to really have both of them on the same team in this team exactly. After that, we're going to have the Citrus Berry Mandibuzz, the Focus Ash Equidrill, the Choice Scarf Latios that actually really worked in the past couple games at dealing with opposing Landruses. And then last but not least, we have the Watery MZ Rotom Wash. So I probably won't be bringing Rotom and Aegislash in the same game. It's definitely possible, but I don't really feel that they both come to the same game, which is why I'm okay with having two different Z moves. So I just want to say thank you guys for watching these games. As always, let me know if you guys have any tips or tricks for things I could be doing to make these teams a little bit better. We're going to hop some games right now, hop right into it, and hopefully uh, hopefully win some. So here we go. We're going to get right into it. Okay, we got our first game of the day. We have Celesteela, Tapu Lele, Blaziken, Slowbro, Magnezone, and Greninja. Very scary theme. Let's talk about what his strengths are. Potentially Mega Blaziken. Mega Blaziken, former Uber, very, very strong Pokemon with the speed boost ability. Greninja could potentially have Battle Bond or Protein. Lele might actually be Scarfed here. I guess could also be Mega Slowbro. He's already locked in. Okay. Okay, I see you over there. Let's talk about how his team deals with Tarantar Excadrill and if it even can. I don't think that he can. Um, the only thing that he could really do against Titar Exodrill is like steal a me, but if I just switch in Rotom and use my Z-Move or Thunderbolts correctly, I should be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Tranitar, Excadrill, Rotom, and I kind of want to bring the Aegislash to switch it in to block a high jump kick. I think that might be a pretty decent idea, but I don't want to bring Aegislash and Rotom in the same game. I think Aegislash is still really good here though. Maybe we bring both and just use the Z-Move where we need to use it. But then is Rotom really good? No, Latios is probably better then. I mean, we still have time. Latios is decent. Yeah, Latios has like Psychic, Draco. Yeah, let's do that. Let's bring Latios instead. Latios could uh, also Revenge KO a bunch of Pokemon. You know, Skyshock's really good against Blaziken. Um, against the Lele, you know, I, I would obviously have to not go for my Psychic and Dragon attacks. But I also also have a HP Ground, which is really good against like Magnezone and Blaziken. And if Greninja changes his type through Protein to something that's weak against ground, that's also pretty good. So hopefully we'll be able to do okay. We see Lele and Greninja. I think this is a pretty solid lead. The only thing that sucks here is we don't know if that Greninja is Protein or Battle Bond yet. And, uh, you know, I think we'll still be fine. We're probably just going to go for the Iron Head onto the Lele. I kind of want to go for... Well, alright, let's look at this. Look at the board. Um, one of the things that Greninja is really, really good at is using Water Shriek, and Water Shriek is a priority move that hits two to five times. They actually recently changed it to a special attack, and his own Tabu Terrain stops him from doing that. So that means I can technically Dragon Dance on this guy, I think, like right in his face if I wanted to. But you know what we're actually just going to do? We're going to respect the Greninja. Are we going to respect it? I really think he's going to low kick my guitar. Let's switch in the Latios. I'm playing a little bit too safe here, switching in Latios, but I'm respecting his play. I'm respecting whatever he can do by switching in my Latios. Uh, so we're going to switch out T-Tar. Let's see what Leo is going for. Um, I'd love to be able to get this Leo off the board. It'd be so big if we got the Leo off the board. So Iron Head comes out. Lele should be going down, please. All right, cool. Lele goes down. And let's see what the Greninja is using. Let's see if he's actually using the low kick. Matt Block. A little bit too slow. It would have been good against the T-Tar, but not good enough. So, Mad Block's not going to work. And uh, it looks like he's Battle Bomb because he didn't change to a Fighting type. If he changed to a Fighting type because of that, ooh, that Psychic would have hit home. Hopefully, this also breaks potential Sash that he was holding, too. We haven't seen his Sash yet, so we have to be a little bit scared of it. Let's see if he sends out Blaziken. Ooh, it's going to be Slowbro. 
He can trick room me if he needs to. What is this, Psychic Seed, Slowbro? Okay. I can respect that. Oh, he is a fighting type. He is a fighting type. The Greninja is a fighting type. He did he did protein us. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to Psychic the heck out of that. That's that's Psyshock City over there. And uh, remember, Greninja is supposed to be faster than Latios. So he's going to be like, I'm going to Ice Beam that Latios. And I'm like, you're not. You're not going to Ice Beam my Latios. We're going to Hard Switch in our Aegis Slash here uh, to block the Scald. And the reason we're switching an Aegis Slash over Tranitar is because of Scald, obviously. So, let's see. I, I Slowbro Lele, why isn't that a core? That seems so good. He gets the boost from the Psychic Terrain, can't get Fake Outed. That seems like a pretty decent core. Psyshock's coming in here. Unfortunately, I don't get the boost, but we are slamming a super effective Psyshock into the Greninja. Gonna be able to pick up that KO, and if he triggers me, that sucks. But there's the Scald, just like I said, coming into what would have been the Tyranitar slot if I switched in, and I got the burn. Like... I'm not happy that I got burned, but, you know, I was going to switch into Tyranitar there, and I'm really happy that I didn't. I made all the correct plays to avoid that from happening, and I'm actually really, really uh, happy about that play. So everything's going exactly the way I want it to. Let's see what his last mon is. Hopefully it's the Blaziken. That'd be so good. Oh my gosh, it's Blaziken. I swear, I just, like, flowcharted this whole game, and it's perfect. Because remember, even if Blaziken protects Megas and gets its speed boost, Latios still has a higher base speed. So we're going to be able to fire up these Psy Shocks no matter what. So we're going to go uh, Psy Shock into the Blaziken. And we're actually going to get to pop our Shadow Ball, our never-ending nightmare. That's what it's called, onto the Slowbro. He does have the boost, but... I still think this is going to deal a ton of damage. Slowbro isn't really known as having a high special D stat. So we're going to see Mega Blaziken hit the field. But remember, Blaziken's going to be slow. He has to go for like a double protect. And he's not even going to be able to get the first protect. Because we're going to slam that Psy Shock into that guy. Pick up the KO. And we're going to see if we can do the same thing to the Slowbro. It's going to be really cool seeing an Age Slash go for a Z move. So Age Slash, not being the fastest Pokemon in the world, it's still a little bit faster than Slowbro. So we're going to see how much damage this does. Remember, the Slowbro does have the boost from the Psychic Seeds, giving it a 1.5 boost with Special Defense stat. And uh, we're Stance Dancing into Offensive Stance, going into Blade Form and firing up a huge stabbed Never Ending Nightmare boosted off of Shadow Ball. It's going to be super effective against this Slowbro, and we're going to see if we can pick up the KO. I don't think we can, but I really want to. Can we pick up the KO? Oh man, that is some crazy damage coming out from Aegis Slash. Slowbro gets pretty much one-shotted, and we do pick up the victory! So, pretty good first game of the day. I think that went exactly the way I wanted it to. It looked like bringing Latios was actually the thing that won the game, you know. It ended up winning me against their ninja, KO'd the Blaziken, and I was gonna bring Rotom instead. I guess Rotom still could have potentially done those type of things as well. But I think Latios was just a, a further step in the right direction, a little bit more optimal pick uh, because it was more proactive. You know, I was the one going first in both those scenarios instead of letting them attack and slamming a super effective move after going second. So pretty good first game. We're going to hop into a second one and see if we can keep the win streak alive. Here we go. All right, look at this team. We see Leafeon. Oh my gosh, Leafeon's so cool. Charizard, Tarantar, Blastoise, Ferrothorn, and Cresselia. The first thing you always want to do when you see Charizard and Cresselia is you want to think about what the potential Cresselia moveset is. Is it going to be an Icy Wing Cresselia or a Trick Room Cresselia? I think this could potentially be a Trick Room Cresselia because it's paired with a Ferrothorn. But if you look closely, it's being paired with like a Tyranitar and a Blastoise. It's probably an Icy Wind Cresselia, so I'm thinking maybe... Moonlight, Icy Wind, Calm Mind, Psychic. Maybe that last move is Trick Room instead of Psychic. Maybe it's Protect. It's kind of hard to say. I have to definitely respect the Cresselia pick, though. So what I think I'm going to do is probably go Tyranitar Excadrill. I think Iron Head Crunch can probably take out Cresselia if I had to. I can take out Tar I can take out the uh, Charizard through the use of Rock Slide. And uh, the rest of the Pokemon pretty much get wrecked by the T-Tar. So we're going to go T-Tar. We're going to go Excadrill. And I'm thinking about bringing Aegislash here. I think my Z-Move would deal a ton of damage to that guy. And then I'm looking at the last Mon, I kind of want to bring Latios. But Latios has a pretty hard time dealing with Tyranitar. I kind of want to bring Mandibuzz, but Mandibuzz actually technically loses to Cresselia. I think I'm going to bring Aegislash and Rotom. Not that I think Rotom is necessarily great here, but Thunderbolt would be really good against Blastoise and Charizard. And then if I have to Hydro Pump a Tyranitar, I can. I think Rotom's better than nothing here. And uh, Latios is just, I don't need the speed from Latios to really win this matchup. That's just the way I see it. So hopefully we're going to do pretty good here. Um, this could potentially just be another game that we win right off the bat because Tarantar and Excadrill are so strong. So we're going to see what our opponent has in store for us. It'd be really funny if we saw like Charizard Alivion plays. 
So let's see what we see. Hopefully we don't see that much. All right, Titar Exodrill starting it off. Remember, this is the Sandstream team. Exodrill has Sand, sand Rush, and that's uh, it doubles its speed. So we see Blastoise and Ferrothorn. Now, one thing to note against Blastoise, it's probably going to be Mega Blastoise here. I'm just saying that because I, that's why I think it is. Uh, but Blastoise can also get Fake Out. So let's go look at his team. We see his he led with Blastoise, Ferrothorn. And now, if it's going to be Mega Blastoise, that means he's not going to be bringing the Charizard. So I'm going to say he probably has Blastoise, Ferrothorn, Cresselia, Tarantar. Those are the four that I'm going to guess that he has. Maybe he still has the Leafy on, but I really doubt it. So if we're ever going to respect the, the, the fake out on Blastoise, the play here is to switch out the Tyranitar for Aegislash. And do I just want to Rock Slide? I think I'm just going to double switch. Yeah. I'll switch Rotom in that slot, because I would be scalding the Excadrill, probably. And the reason we're switching out Tyranitar for Aegislash uh, is because he, uh, Mega Blastos could potentially get Aura Sphere, so we're going to switch in a Ghost type on that slot just in case. I really don't think he would go for a Power Whip on my Excadrill slot. It's it's probable, but I don't really think he would. So we're, we're double switching, we're definitely respecting him. He's just going for a Scald, he's not Megaing, which means he's most likely going to be... Uh, Wow, I didn't get burnt. He's he's most likely going to be vested uh, Blastoise, which is which is okay. It's no big deal. All right, so we got two Z move users. Uh, who's going to be using what? I'm probably going to be Z moving that Ferrothorn this turn. Never ending nightmare coming onto the Ferrothorn, and I kind of want to protect with my my Rotom because I really think he could go into that slot. But we're actually just going to Thunderbolt the Blastoise. We're just going to soften it up. And I don't think the Blastoise can protect because I really do think the Blastoise has an Assault Vest. That's just uh, generally how I'm seeing it here. It looks like he's not vested. He should be going down to the sand. And he's going for a second Scald. I wonder what item he has. I don't think it's like Specs. He's going to burn my Aegislash. It's not really the end of the world. Aegislash is going to be able to fire off a Neverending Nightmare onto the Ferrothorn. And we're not really trying to pick up big KOs here. We're just trying to soften things up so we can come in with like an Earthquake with that extra drill and just pick up a KO from there. So we're looking to try and do 60 to 70 percent with this. If we get a crit and we get a KO, that's awesome, but it's not really required for the type of game that I'm trying to play. We're just trying to deal a good amount of damage. So we go for the Nevering Nightmare. It's going to deal a ton of damage to this guy, I think, unless he's holding the vest. Nope, that's about as much damage as I thought. It's about 80%. Use for a power-up. He's going to be able to KO the Rotom. This is completely fine, because remember, we're just going to be able to come in with the uh, extra draw and just go for an Earthquake anyways. So this is actually pretty good. Blastoise is going to take out from Sandstorm. Perfect. We trade one for one. We blew our Z move, but we soften up the Ferrothorn as enough. We soften it up enough. Now, I'm thinking about coming in with the Tyranitar here. The only reason being is that he still has... Now, I'm going to come with the extra draw. Uh... Because we can just rock slide a Charizard, and if uh, he comes in with Tarantar, we can just Iron Head it. So Extra Drill is definitely the play here. We're trying to maximize the sand while we have it. Holy moly, it's a Leafeon. Alright, so Leafeon is a Pokemon that, for those of you who don't know what Leafeon does, it has a very high base defense stat. So it's going to be something you really have to respect whenever playing against it. We're just going to be Shadow Balling the Ferrothorn, and we're just going to be going for an Iron Head on Leafeon. Uh, we're not trying to pick up a KO on Leafeon, we're just trying to deal over half, and that would be a... Uh, I'd be I'd be lucky to deal over half with this. Yeah, that's that's about as much as you're gonna get. So he's gonna get Swords Dance us. That's definitely very scary, but it's not something that I can't beat. Because remember, Aegislash is gonna be a little bit faster than Ferrothorn. We're just gonna stay in offensive stance and go for a Shadow Ball. Should be able to pick up the KO. Yeah, we're gonna pick up the KO. And as long as this last Mon isn't Charizard, I think we're gonna be okay. Even if it is Charizard, uh, I think we're gonna be fine. Yeah, I think because my actual has a Sash, we're just gonna be fine. I'm probably just going to wide guard next turn and go for uh, an Iron Head on Leafeon. And then it's pretty much going to be Tarantar versus Charizard. Place your bets on who's going to win that one. So we're going to stay in offensive stance. We're just going to wide guard. And uh, we're just going to go for an Iron Head. we got to KO that Leafeon no matter what. Worst case scenario, if I have to switch in Tarantar next turn, I'll switch in Tarantar. Uh, I don't want to switch in Tarantar this turn because I would be switching it in. And then he would be Megaing. And uh, then he would have the sanded, or then he would have the weather advantage. So we're going to wave from the Mega... If we ever have to potentially switch in Char or Tarantar, we're going to switch in Tarantar, but hopefully we can just kill with a Leafy on here. He's going to go for the Drought, but I still think Extra Jewel Speed Ring, uh, the way it's all calculated, it would have uh, activated correctly. It doesn't really matter anyway. So he's going to block us right there. We're going to use Wide Guard. Hopefully he's not just Flamethrowering my Extra Jewel. Hopefully he's going for like a Wide Guard or even like a Flamethrower on my uh, Age of Slash. That'd even be the best if you Flamethrower Age of Slash. He's going to go for a Heat Wave. We're going to block that. 
Now I'm thinking about what I want to do here. I think I might just protect with my Excadrill and Heart Switch and Tyranitar. Because then I would just have the advantage that I want. Yeah. So we're going to switch in Tyranitar. We're just going to protect with Excadrill. Kind of sucks I'm switching in my Tyranitar, but I still think I'm going to be fine. As long as I get the sun up, or sorry, as long as I deny his sun, I'm going to be in a really good spot. Uh, this could be a little bit predictable play. Maybe he'll read it and just nuke the Tyranitar slot. I still think I'll be fine. He'd have to be going for, like, a sunny day on the switch in. Like, his Leafy on would have to be sunny daying me right now for me to be in a really bad spot. Like, if his Leafy on sunny dayed me, and it was faster than his Charizard, and they, like, stole or beam crit my Tyranitar, that'd be hilarious. I don't think he's gonna do that, but, uh, you know, I've seen, I've seen crazier on Battle Spot Doubles. You can't sleep on anyone in this format, so, uh, gotta respect everything. Let's see what he goes for. I think, I think I'm in a big advantage. We're just waiting on him. I already, I put my moves in a long time ago. Maybe he's just timering. Maybe he's, maybe he's just going to run. Alright, so Aegislash is switching out. What do we got? What do we got? Titar's switching in. It's going to be able to activate the Sandstream. And remember, I haven't even went Mega yet. So I can, even if he does Sunny Day me, I'll just Mega Evolve next turn. And I'll, I'll be in a good spot. So Extra Drill's protecting. Maybe this is a little bit too predictable. I don't know. I don't know. So he's Z-moving me. No! He's Z-moving somebody. This sucks. Is he Z-moving my Aegislash? Z move Leafeon. Okay, he's gonna be able to take out my uh he's definitely gonna take out the Trantar if he hits it. He's bloom dooming me! How often do you see that? Hopefully he's not hitting my Excadrill. Don't hit my Excadrill. Just hit my just hit my T Tar. He hit the Excadrill, okay. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Just kinda could be worse. Alright, so Excadrill takes some damage. If he's going for solar beam, he's just going for flamethrower. Don't burn me. You already burned me once this game. Don't burn me. Please, please don't burn me. I really don't deserve this. No burn. Oh my gosh, we dodged the burn. Alright, we did it, boys. Okay, so Leafeon is within range for a bunch of attacks. I could go for the Rock Slide. I go for Rock Slide, but if it protects the Charizard and attacks my extra with Leafeon, I'll lose right there. So I think what I have to do, I think I actually have to... I think I have to Stone Edge the dang Charizard. Is that the play? I think I have to Stone Edge Charizard and Iron Head the uh, Leafeon. Because that way, if he even protects baits us with Leafeon, we still can't wish Charizard. And then it's Leafeon versus uh, Tyranitar and Aegislash. I don't think Leafeon really wins that one. It doesn't really have any AoE moves. Barring potentially maybe Razor Leaf. So we'll see what we get. Leafeon's protecting. So he's going with the correct play. He's probably going for a Heat Wave here. Uh, unless he burns my T-Tar or I miss the Stone Edge, I'm going to be in a good spot. I could have went for the Rock Slide and it probably would have KO'd Charizard. Oh, I'm faster? Yes, we take those. We, we take those. Why am I faster? I, I am a full speed Jolly Tyranitar. I'm allowed to be faster than things. It's just surprising when we're faster than a base 100 speed Pokemon. So I guess we win. Um, and I hit the Stone Edge. Note that hitting the Stone Edge is something I don't do very often. I really think what they could have done uh, it, with, this, with this gen or any gen, I really think if they made Stone Edge's accuracy 100 in the sand... That would have been a cool mechanic. I know that Blizzard uh, is 100 percent accuracy in the uh, in the hail. I know that Hurricane's 100 percent accuracy in the rain. I don't think there's any fire moves that get boosted like that, uh, accuracy wise. But if Stone Edge was 100 percent accuracy in the rain, I really think that would create a healthier meta game because everyone just spams Rock Slide and it's like everyone complains about flinches and speed ties. No really, no one really complains about Stone Edge other than it misses all the time. And I, I think it would make people run Stone Edge over Rock Slide, which would take away a bunch of the hacks from flinching. Sure, there'd be crits involved, but I don't think that it would get out of control. So let me know what you guys think about that little piece of information at the end. Do you think Stone Edge would be really cool if it was 100% accuracy in the sand? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.